I'm Ruth Molman from the Farmington Hills Historic District Commission, and we will be going to visit the historic First Baptist Church of Farmington at Chiawassee and Farmington Roads in the historical district Farmington, the history of the church and the early hi history of religion in Farmington. Missionaries were sent out from the churches in New York to distribute Bibles and preach in the frontier regions. The missionaries were poorly paid and had to supplement their preaching by establishing farms in the areas. The Baptist chur Church had come to Pontiac in 1822, two years before the first settlers came to Farmington. It was a hard trip for settlers who wanted to attend the Baptist service, for it was a 14-mile trip by ox cart over bad roads. Four years later, in 1826, the Baptists organized their own church in Farmington at the home of Robert Wixom. Because schools were built on the frontier before any other institutions, there was a log school at the corner of the current 12 Mile and Halstead Roads. There the Baptists gathered and held services. In 1833, the Baptist Home Missionary Society sent out Nehemiah Lamb and his two sons, Caleb and Eroswell. Just a few years later, in 1835, a church was built at Halstead and Twelve Mile Roads. There, a church cemetery was near the church. Because a popular mill at Eleven Mile and Drake Roads had a lot of business, people thought the new village for the area would gather around the mill. The center of the village developed instead at Division Street and Shiawassee Trail, Farmington Roads and Shiawassee. After Nehemiah Lamb and his sons were sent to other communities, attendance at the church dropped off. The Reverend Lambs went to West Bloomfield, Wall Lake, and other communities to organize new churches. The one in Wall Lake that was organized by Caleb Lamb is still there. As the attendance dropped off and there were few people coming to the church, the church at 12 Mile and Halstead Road was sold and used as a barn. Pioneers wasted very little. The cemetery became known as the Baptist Burying Ground and is now the historic West Bluefield Cemetery, a part of the Farmington Hills Historic District. In the village of Farmington, the Baptists reorganized. The Reverend John Rasco was the minister starting in 1857. By 1860, a new church was dedicated. This church has been here ever since. It has been active in Farmington civic affairs. Uh, at this time, the Farmington was part of the Underground Railroad that helped escaping slaves uh, reach Canada. The most significant time was 1850 after the uh, fugitive slave law was passed and it was very dangerous to help these slaves. The church was active in the Underground Railroad from 1850 to 1865 at the, that was the, marked the end of the Civil War. The Baptist church basement was one of the safe places for the escaping slaves. Soon after the church building was built, Reverend Rasco started the Oakland Institute, which might have been an early college but somehow it just didn't make it. Another activity of the church were the, uh, was starting a library in Farmington. Ladies' literary societies were very popular. The, the ladies started the first Farmington library right there in the church where, where they were members. Now we will meet with Bob Erickson, a longtime member of the Baptist Church, who will bring us up to date on the more recent activities in the church and show where some significant events occurred. We will now go to the new sanctuary. We are here in the chapel of the, the new chapel of the Baptist Church with uh, Robert Erickson, mm -hmm, right. who has been a member of the church since he was a young boy, uh -huh. and he's going to tell us about some of his adventures here at the church, uh -huh. beginning at 
Well, when did you first join? I joined when I was 14. That'd be uh, 1945. I started attending in 1943. And the old chapel was still here? Or the old still? church, yeah. I, was still at, uh, I met in that old church, right. The uh, education building was already constructed. We had our Sunday school classes at. And you, you uh, had that uh, cha uh, the raised platform in the, in the old church, and you still were meeting in the old church? Right, meeting in the old church. Uh, the, that's the reason they ended up building this new auditorium, because they had they had to have two services, and I remember I showed you, Ruth, how they had to cut a hole through the, the wall in the uh, old sanctuary, and, mm -hmm. and in part of the, uh, the educational unit, they had seats out there for people to sit. And on the uh, west wall, they had to cut away part of the, uh, uh, the old sanctuary to ac uh, have access to another room for people to sit. And it just got to be too many people, so uh, the God laid on the heart of the people to build uh, this auditorium, which they did for $192,000. They raised the money to build this auditorium right here. And the uh, members built most of this themselves? No, uh, no, this was all built by a contractor, a Christian contractor, although uh, members of the church were allowed to come and do some of the manual labor here uh, to save on some of the cost. But in the old education unit, I was telling you uh, that the uh, uh, some of the members were involved in that, and one fell from the rafters into the basement and was killed in the process of doing that. There's a sad story with that. Yes. But that was, uh, that was prior to uh, my, me coming to the church. You know. And now you, were un you had special kind of heating in the church, the early heating you were telling me about. Yes, in the old education unit, I think it was uh, coal-fired. Even the, uh, the, the new uh, education unit was coal-fired. And I was telling you, Ruth, about the old, uh, they call it the old octopus-type heaters, gravity, big, huge pipes that carry the heat up to the, uh, up to the rooms by gravity, and the cold air would come back down the pipes and, uh, and reheat it again. And that was all coal-fired. So that you had to have somebody come in and, and stoke the fires, you know. And I believe the woman that uh, was in charge of the uh, stoking the, uh, the coal fire furnace in the auditorium. Um, I'm not sure she was a member of the church, but she was given the, she was a custodial of that part of it. And um, I know sometimes that she would come in right during the middle of the service and she had to rack those um, uh, levers back and forth to get the coal clinkers go down. So that was, that kind of interrupted the service with that until you got finished racking the coal back and forth, the coal <laughs> clinkers out of the thing and restoke again. But uh, between the, the old education uh, and the auditorium, the old auditorium, there was two concrete strips that the trucks would back up into and to um, unload the coal in those chutes there. And actually, the, our church bus would back up in there too and let the kids out for the, uh, the education unit. But we parked all in front of the church. There's no parking. We had no parking facilities behind the church. It was all out in front that they had uh, it was this gravel, you know, gravel in front of the church there. And you had your car parked out there one time? What happened to it? Yes, uh, that was a funny instance. I had a 1929 Ford, but I made a real step up. I got a 1937 Ford, and I pulled in front of the church. I came down Shiawassee, going west down Shiawassee, pulled in the park in front of the church. And one of the deacons came up right in the middle of the service and says, uh, Bob, he says, your car is going down the street. I says, you're, you're kidding, of course. And he said, uh, no, I'm serious. Your car's going down the street. So I got up and walked up in my car. I used to throw it in reverse. I, it was an old car, and I wouldn't dare pull the burn brake on it because it probably freeze up. And it left in, re in reverse. And uh, somehow the starter stuck on it right in the middle of the service and started going down the street on the battery. By the time I caught up to halfway down, uh, uh, down uh, Shiawassee before I got up the hill, it... Uh, the batteries were pretty well uh, running down. It was rrr, 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 getting kind of <laughs> sick there. But that was kind of a funny experience. I never expected that, yeah. yeah. And then they built the parking lots when they built the... Uh... When they built this auditorium here, well, they actually, they had a house here. And we met for a short time. Our, our, our class, the Sun School class, met in this house right where this is the sanctuary is built right now. Uh, we met for a short time, and they finally tore it down. Actually. We didn't tear it down. We gave the house to a uh, fellow, and he tore it down board by board, piece by piece, and then carried it all off. And then they started the excavation here, the building for this auditorium right here. Do you know where he took it? 
I have no idea where he took it, whether he re 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 rebuilt the thing again or not. It was not a, the historical building like the old Carpenter House, which was west of here. We ended up buying that off uh, uh, the Carpenter family, and uh, we dedicated that to historical society. But they wanted all the property to go with it, and we wanted the, you know, we wanted the, uh, the property that was a big thing, you know, expansion for parking and things of that sort. And so it, uh, the, the building finally got disrepaired, and they, they was condemned by the Farmington, Farmington Hills, you know, Farmington uh, City, and, they, and we had to get, have it get torn down. And well, that's, that's a shame. But yeah, these it was one of the historic, one of the oldest uh, houses in in, uh, in Farmington, and you know, it's the bronze plaque, of course. It was dedicated and put out in front of the church on the history of the, the church. Right. Yeah, but and then you did a lot of work with the Boy Scouts, too. Yes. Um, the church paid for my, uh, in 1950, the church paid for to send me to uh, uh, the Valley Forge uh, for the Boy Scout Jamboree. And uh, I was the uh, assistant scoutmaster there. And my dad, prior to that, was scoutmaster. The Children's Hospital. Uh, which is now the Botsford uh, Manor, mm -hmm. that used to be the Children's Hospital. Uh, I was the assistant scout master there, and we used to take the kids out on their property uh, once a year, and, and they couldn't, that, we took them camping. We had tents sent up, and be, the nurses would wheel them out in wheelchairs and carts, and we'd take them out camping, and they'd uh, be around the campfire, circle around the campfire, and play games, and whatever games they could, by laying on carts and that. And that was their camping out, and it was a, it was a, I felt it was a, it was a really worthwhile thing. Oh, you did some wonderful things. Yeah, and Pontiac, it was nice. Pontiac paper took a picture of me. I, I still have the photograph. It was in the paper, me and the, and the scout master there. And in the meantime, they were increasing the church and building on to it? Yes, uh, I retired in, in, uh, from Ford Motor Company in 1994, in January. From then I took on a project, me and my wife and Hugh Thompson and his wife, Donna, and we um, end up taking over all the older part of the building, the old uh, sanctuary and the old uh, education unit, and restored that. And it was so much, we got the, a lot of enthusiasm. People said, hey, I'll get part of this. So we actually had a huge group of church members spent a lot of their time, and we remodeled that. I think we got the, there was $25,000 given to us for expenses, and we remodeled from that uh, from the d place where you go through, from the au this au new auditorium to the old sanctuary and the old education unit, all that has been remodeled back then, you know, because it, uh, it got in disrepair, you know, things that damages don't get fixed now it is. So we just did the, did the whole thing. And, and so it's a, what you see over now is the, is the finished product. With all the wonderful little classrooms and a place for the children. Yeah, and it's right, yeah, yeah. When they have the services, they keep the children in the... Uh, well, Sunday actually, school? we have nurseries, you know, a, a baby nursery and a toddler uh, nursery. And uh, years ago, in the old education unit, we'd have banquets there for the, uh, uh, for the members of the church. And, um, and we actually, back in those days, we'd use the kitchen and cook food and things of that sort. Later on, when the, we moved in this new, new sanctuary, we, we divided that, the old sanctuary up in half and put a drop ceiling in it. And we made that part a toddler room and part nursery. In fact, I, I didn't point out to you, but there's that one wall. There's actually a, uh, a glass in there with a Venetian blind. You can look into from one room to the other and see what's going on, you know. And that's been since that time. That's you know the nurseries have been moved. A lot of things have happened, but that was the, the original concept. Yeah. Well, I noticed the choir. The, the pictures of it of the choir out in the uh, snow. The gals with their shoes. I yeah, don't know how they ever did Yeah, that's a dedication. It a dedication for this a groundbreaking, the, the start of this new part here. Yeah, after the guy tore the house down, we had the uh, ground, groundbreaking and in 1956, I believe it is, that, uh, that's when they got this dedicated this part here, yeah. And they put in the parking lots. And yes, there was a parking lot. And of course, after we got the Carpenter property, we extended that parking lot down farther west into the edge of the par parking lot mm -hmm. uh, lane, yeah. So it made a very very unique church and a lovely church lasting. Yes, yeah, it, uh, the church has a lot of rich history. Um, they, in the old, um, the old sanctuary, they, uh, I understand that they used to raise money to help uh, support the pastor. They'd have um, served meals to the, the uh, members of the, uh, the community. 
Uh, and when they built that bell tower in 1900, they took the bell that was on the original structure on the, on the sanctuary, moved it to the side, built the tower, and they had a little um, part behind it where they actually had a kitchen. They would serve food for the uh, community, sell food for the community. Um, and then eventually they, uh, I don't know if they took it off, but they made um, two room, a room there, divided the room and uh, made it for a dressing room for, for, for baptismal mm -hmm. and also for the choir to put on their robes to come up on the, on the platform for singing. Is the and bell, I was involved in that myself, yes. Is the bell still up there? Oh, the bell, so the original bell, still there, the original Farmington bell. Do they ever? Ring it? Yes. Oh, yeah, every Sunday. They ring it every Sunday, yeah. Hugh Thompson's our official bell ringer. I think he's his first dingling, I call him. <laughs> 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 yeah, official dingling, huh? But he's been ringing the bell. In fact, when he had the, uh, was it, uh, the anniversary of 9-11, they asked, the, the Farmington community asked us to ring the bell for, I think, a half an hour. And he came up and rang that bell for half an hour. All the churches so, ring the bell at the same time? All the churches rang the bell at the same time, right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, this was Shiawassee and Farmington Road. They just have churches along here every few feet. It, <laughs> yeah, it seemed like they. Yeah, in competition well, with each other. Of well, course. you see how the old, the old pictures back there where they actually had wooden planks to walk on to get back to the church because there was no sidewalks and just nothing but dirt roads to get back. They had hitching rails for the farmers to hit, tie their horses and their carriages up to. And that's the reason they actually built this church, because uh, they go to Pontiac Church. It was a 15-mile uh, drive for them. That's a long time to take their, their uh, horses and carriages to go to church. So they decided they, they built a community here, you know. That was 19, 1821, and they were, before they uh, started uh, the yeah. church in, in Pontiac. In, uh, yeah, yeah, 1926, they, they eight, met first off in a, in a little home, somebody's home here, and then they, they went to a... Uh, log cabin um, um, schoolhouse uh, at uh, Haggerty and, and uh, Halstead, uh, Halstead and, um, and 12 Mile, excuse me, Halstead and 12 Mile, and they met there for a while. But then uh, they decided to uh, build a um, uh, sanctuary up on, uh, well, right now it's the old cemetery, Farmington Cemetery on the top of the hill, and they, they had the services there. That, yeah. was, that was when uh, Nehemiah Lamb and his uh, two uh, sons were there. Well, I, yeah, Roswell I went down and, and Caleb, and I see that they were early ministers of your church. Uh-huh, right, there you go. They uh, came, they moved the church, it was in 1857, I believe. Right, 1857 is when we, built this uh, new uh, the, uh, education for, it was uh, 28 by 43 feet, I believe the, the original sanctuary is. Mm -hmm. And uh, they built that for, uh, it cost them $2,800 to have that, build that, that <laughs> building. That was big money in those days. Yeah, remember, it, we've had that it's, uh, inspected by the uh, Corps of Engineers and uh, see if it's a sound building still. Well, I remember I showed you down there, it's all hewed timber, that's, uh, the, the wood is notched together with pegs and stuff like that. They said it's still very sound. We have a little history about that when they, their baptismal tank was just a, they cut a hole in the floor and put a, uh, a copper tank in the floor and they baptized and the, that they take the cover off and baptize people in it. Well, one day they took the cover off and the uh, copper tank was gone. I guess copper was pretty expensive back then because <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody stole the tank. Oh, but they used the Methodist church, uh, they had a, uh, one on Grand River uh, had a fire in their church, and so they used our facilities for a while. Um, the, um, that was 1929. Somebody was telling me uh, that they were here, and uh, it was 1929 that the church burned. The uh, Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. Methodist Church. And yeah, they used our facilities for a couple of years, I believe. They mm -hmm. got those uh, self. Uh, they back cooperated the with each other. It's right, wonderful. Yeah, that, right. Uh, we did, and then uh, finally, uh, Albert McDonald. Um, who was a, um, an architect, uh, he drew up the plans for a concrete um, a baptismal tank. And that's, and they, or to this day, it's still there. Uh, uh, in fact, that was the tank I was baptized in. That was the addition you'll see on the, you walk on the behind the church, you'll see a little uh, back door, and that's the, the back door goes to that uh, baptismal tank. And that's the same rooms that we used for the dressing rooms is what we, 
would get their, you know, for the baptismal, you know, put on our clothing and go up to be baptized, you know, change our clothing. And I noticed your father was involved. Uh, yes, in my dad was a lifetime deacon. And one of the pictures you saw of the uh, uh, inside this building, the, a, a pew back there in the back corner, and my dad was standing there. He was a lifetime deacon. He was one that read the uh, scriptures at the uh, groundbreaking. Uh, he he uh, he went to be with the Lord in 2006, and he was uh, almost 101 years old. Wow! In February, it just, December 20th, he died. In February, he would have been 101. And my mother died uh, a year later, and she, and she would have been 100. In April, she died December 30th, a year later, yeah. Was your mother involved in the, in the church too? Oh yes, my mother's involved. She was um, a treasurer of the church. Uh, she's very active in the church, everybody is active. Actually, uh, my sister and I started at this church, uh, by, came by herself. You know, we lived about eight miles in front of the road. We could just hike it down here or else get a ride down for the church service. And. Uh, and a short time later, just within a year or so, uh, about a year later, uh, my dad joined the church, and he was very, very active from then on. And everything that uh, everything I did, he got involved with it. You know, he was a great guy. And uh, uh, of course, my mother couldn't get in the scouts and that, but my dad was in the scouts with me. You know, and and we did a lot of things together. You know, so it's a it was a great time. It's so wonderful that the church was supporting the scouts. It's great. Yes, yeah, Troop Thirty Five, and they had two. Girl Scout troops, two Girl Scout troops, and uh, they end up giving, they got so big, they end up having uh, um, another uh, ex church or somebody take over one of the parts of it. You know, that I forget what, Troop 7, I think, was a Girl Scout tr troop, if I remember correctly. So that was a big, a big thing in this. But our Scouts was, was huge. We did a lot of, I showed some pictures of the paper drive. We'd go out and raise money by picking up papers and take them over the Pontiac with our, uh, with our uh, trailers, you know, for raising money for the scouts. It was uh, some good projects, you know. Oh, supporting the pastor and supporting the scouts, you yeah. do an awful lot of things. Yeah, you know, there was a lot, lot of activities going on, yeah. We had, we had a great time, yeah. Well, was, if we go back in the history that you, you sheltered slaves here and you... Uh, and the first library was here. Right, actually the, the Farmington Library was was here in the church and we had the books for a long time. We had some, back in the education unit there, we had all the uh, shelves with all the Farmington Libraries and they, books in it. And when you, know, you open up, you see it's had a stamp at Farmington Library and they must have been, had somebody was in charge to hand them out, you know, and make sure they get back in time and all that stuff. It was the Ladies Literary Society. They had various literary societies. Oh, did they? And you had a pastor by the name of Roscoe, uh -huh. and he started a institute. It, it almost developed into a college, but it didn't. They didn't de grant degrees. Oh, I didn't. I'm not that goes that. way back, back mm -hmm. before the uh, turn of the century. Uh -huh. They were very much involved with the literary things, uh -huh. young people and old people. They were telling me about it. Uh -huh. And yeah, I'm not, not, uh, not. That's uh, way, well uh, before your time. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's the yeah. history that they I think were before, kind enough to tell me about. For 1931, I can't help you out on it. <laughs> you know, All I can do is just what I, what's been told me, and I, and reading some of the old literature, find out some of the stuff, you know. Yeah, well, I wasn't there either. This yeah. is somebody else told <laughs> yeah, me. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I hope I'm right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's where the, that's where the library got started, right here. Uh huh. In your church. Yeah. And of course, after we we uh, dedicated and moved into this auditorium here, the old auditorium was divided in half, and that's they made it into in the nursery part of the nursery, another in the classroom, and the old platform area was uh, a partition went across that, and they uh, they made that into the the church library, so people could take uh, take out uh, tape, tapes and uh, and books and for you know the use for and then return the books back. So that was our our library there. Yeah, well, they had moved the other library out no, into the library, city hall. No, that library, they actually, they actually gave those books away. If anybody wanted the books, you know, give them away, give them away, give them away. just get rid of all the books. You know, we had this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these old, old books. Hmm. And they, uh, it didn't go but revert back to, you know, anybody, just they wanted to get rid of them. And that's, so mm -hmm. everybody had an opportunity to go back and grab, I think, a, a, a maximum of five books. Well, take, that was out of your library. 
that was probably out of our library, but the school library, I don't know, the, the Farmington High School library, I don't know where those books went to. Well, they went over to City Hall. Did I, they? Okay. I, I understood it. Okay. It a, and did the racks go with them to those uh, glass covered things? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't either. Uh, all of a sudden they're gone, so I just assume that uh, they just gave them away, but that's what happened. That's good. I'd hate to see this old piece of history like that uh, thrown away, you know. The very beginning of our library was here. There you go, yeah. That and, was something. Uh, going way, way back, the Civil War times, they supposedly, uh, all along this road here, it's reported that they sheltered people uh -huh. when they needed to be sheltered. Yeah, well, that, of course, that's part of this, the Farmington history that uh, our church is part of the Underground Railroad. I don't know if there's any, nothing in our history books tell you about that, but. Uh, yeah, well, that's what they claim in that tunnel that. Uh -huh. I'm not sure we could photograph it all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real challenge to take uh, equipment down there and photograph that stuff, you know. I yeah. doubt whether they could do it, but it's, it's under there with the great yeah. big stones foundation. Yeah, uh, Michigan Foundation, yeah. Stones and mortar, yeah. But those are bigger than uh, I've seen in any of the houses. They were much larger yeah. stones that they used. Well, I don't know, maybe it, I don't know where they got them from. That's uh, I don't know where, that, where that came from, but that was interesting that they the construction of it and the, and the old beams and stuff like that. I've, I have uh, in the um, bell tower area, when we mo modernized the thing, uh, we tore the old wet plaster off of it and got back and those beams are most like the house studs are two by four, you know. These are probably about uh, three inches wide uh, uh, to a by two, three by I'd say maybe 10 or 12 inches, huge beams that support all the walls in the old, uh, old sanctuary and in, in the bell tower area. Well, when they dug the foundation for this building right close to the, the old uh, bell tower, it kind of underground the, uh, uh, the footing of that uh, stone foundation. And the bell tower started leaning. So when we, when we did the uh, reconstruction again, we had to get some huge beams and slice into those big uh, studs and put uh, big heavy beans to help to support the tower. That's what we call it the leaning tower of Farmington, you know, there. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's definitely sagging a little bit over the years, getting more and more, you know, uh, over there, you know. I can't quite see the lean. You yeah, well, you, lean well you go down, the, you know, go down, uh, come towards uh, uh, north on Farmington Road, you'll see a slight lean to the tower, you know. Yeah, you'll notice it. Now, now I made you conscious of oh. it. But that's the original that. bell up there, you know. That was that bell been lasting ever since uh, 1856 when I think that was originally put up there. Same old bell, you know. Now everybody's going to know you have a leaning tower. Yeah, everybody's going to know it's a leaning tower of Farmington, everybody in Pisa. <laughs> leaning tower of Farmington. <laughs> thank you so much and uh, we've really enjoyed all the history here and thank you to the church for letting us come in and take pictures of all these things that uh -huh. are so much a part of our Farmington history. Well, Ruth, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be uh, present our church to you and the, some of the things that went on here. And it's so pleasure, pleasure of mine to, to meet you and uh, be part of this, this meeting. Thank you.